I'm Brian Godfrey with Utah Justice TV. I'm here to speak with Gage Froer about the lane splitting bill that's been proposed for the legislative session 2017. I'm on Capitol Hill today talking to Gage Froer. Did I say it correctly? You did. Okay, good. And Gage has sponsored a bill. It's HB 410, correct? Correct. And it's for lane splitting. And of course, you know, on the, on the KSL spot, they talked about it. it's California law. So if you've been in California and the people sit by it, 70 miles an hour and give you a heart attack when your window's down. That's not what this bill is about, correct? It's that's, a Utah version. That's here. exactly right. In fact, that's what I mentioned to Doug Wright, was this is not California law, this will be the Utah law. Right, and so really when it comes down to you know commuting on a motorcycle, even though the traffic laws are mostly the same between a car and a, and a bike, they obviously operate differently and they have different features and functions and um, a lot of the bikes out there are air-cooled. So that's one of the reasons that this bill makes sense is because um, I've got a motorcycle, so I understand this. I've been riding since I was 18, um, and I'm, I'm recreational, though. It's not my main vehicle. And um, so some of the arguments that have been brought up is like, well, because Utah has those seasons, we're going to have to remember every season to look out for bikers and to look out for the lane splitting. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. I don't see that as a big problem because we have to remember every spring, and they put up the warnings on the, on the, on the uh, overhead digital yeah, billboards. Watch out and see the bike, see the riders, see see motorcycles. Exactly. We've got to do that every year anyway with Utah, and I think um, it's an inevitable thing. People in California, if they did it, um, I think part of why California might have just made it legal is because it was more of a necessity, probably I think, than a uh, decision to do it because people were doing it anyway. And how are you going to catch them? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, they cut through four hundred unless you're going to pull a helicopter every time and chase them down and put other people's lives at risk to get one guy doing that. I'd agree with that. You no, know, yeah. I think I think this this law makes a lot of sense if you've ever ridden a bike. When you're sitting in traffic, your bike's overheating, you're getting tired because you're hot, you're already wearing all the gear to protect yourself, um, your bike's 210 degrees, you're at 110 degree day, and you're stuck in traffic that's going to last four hours when you could just get out take an exit, maybe go to Main Street, or take State, or take Frontage Road. You can get out of there. You're less, you're, you're, you're reducing the problem. You're, redu you're, you're uh, reducing that congestion. It makes sense. People that are all for laws that are for the greater good aren't going to oppose this bill. The yeah. people that are ignorant or don't understand or have never ridden a bike, they don't really care. They're going to just see it as a nuisance or, hey, well, how can they do it and I can't? Mm -hmm. It's not that you want to say, Oh yeah, we're going to just favor those motorcycle people. No, it's it's a safety thing. It really is. You want those people to be able to get out of there. That's the scariest riding that ever happens. You can be in the canyon, taking a corner, um, and that's a lot less risk when you've got cars everywhere. You've got no out. You've got nowhere to go, and you're just stuck. And the cars are almost mad because you don't take up that much space, and they're trying to get into the HOV. Mm -hmm. It's a dangerous situation in heavy traffic on a motorcycle. Yeah, they're trying to push you at all yes. times. Yep. And you can't brake check a truck on a bike because mm -hmm. you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. If they hit you, you're going to go flying and it's game over. It doesn't work. You can't brake check somebody and, and get them to go, ooh, I could slam into the back of this giant truck. Right. Or They don't see you. Yeah, they, and they don't, they just, it, there's a psychological thing there. They trust me. You. Yeah. People, and sometimes people are just really rude to bikers for no reason, too. You can be driving along. That's a lot of the reason why sometimes you'll see people traveling in a pack. Mm -hmm. It's not because they're trying to be cool or like they're hanging out like a gang. It's because when you're a rider, people will sometimes mess with you. Like, oh, look at those guys on those sports bikes. Mm -hmm. and they'll... Yeah, so the company makes yeah. uh, for better riding, too. Yes, yeah. yes. And, you know, you're paying attention more. Yeah. You're watching out. When you, If you've been in a big group of people, and I've, I've ridden with big groups when they do the, you know, the once mm -hmm. a year thing. Right. They'll, um, they'll mark with their toe. Like if there's a you know like roadkill that you could slip your tire on and wreck, mm -hmm. right. they'll point if there's right. gravel. I mean, they're people are very safe even on those bikes that get the bad rep, reputation. I have a sports bike, so mm -hmm. I'm in that category where mm -hmm. people think, oh, everybody on one of those is a jerk. Mm -hmm. I usually ride with the Harley guys because mm -hmm. I have more of the mentality. The of, Harley rider, yes, yeah. like mm -hmm. you know, be safe, respect the road, makes sense. Don't be a jerk because you're representing mm -hmm. every single one of the people on two wheels, right. Versus all the people on the four. So, you know, it's 
I think this this bill is a great idea. I'm behind it, and I want to get the word out. So that's why I wanted to meet with you today. Um, Good. Well, I appreciate you taking yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah. To come down. It's you know we've heard from a lot of different people. Yeah. Uh, some of it, uh, some of it in favor, some of it opposed. In fact, I've even had uh, the abate group contact me. And okay. They uh, don't. They haven't taken a solid position. Sure. I've, I've heard from some of the group that are in favor of it. I've heard from others that are not in favor of it. I think the concern from my, putting my feelers out right. with the bike groups that are out there, some that I've started, um, I think they're worried about a trade-off. Like, if we allow this lane splitting, then they're really going to come down and push that helmet law. Yeah. And that is kind of a concern because, again, anybody that's a, a you know educated rider, you're going to wear that helmet because you know you need it. If you're going five miles or down the street, do you have to strap on the rain bucket? You know, you're probably okay. It's like riding a 10 speed, you know, 10 feet. If you're over 18, you ought to be able to decide. Um, But most people, you'll find, you don't wear a helmet. Man, those groups, they really are adamant about, oh, you got to wear your gear. They'll give give you a hard time. Yeah, the the group I ride with, um, yeah, it's pretty much helmet mandatory. Yeah, right. If you don't wear one, you feel out of place. Yeah, you really do. And honestly, when you have one on... um, it's a mentality thing, too. Like, when you're dressed nice, you behave better, maybe, or people at least treat you better. Mm-hmm. Same right. with a the bike. They see you without that helmet, they might kind of, oh, that guy's got a death wish. Yeah. Oh, see that jerk without a helmet? Yeah. It's the same thing. It's same like thing. anything. Yeah. yeah. So, I think, you know, definitely the, um, I don't, I'm not too worried about the helmet law getting pushed through, because there's big support to not let that happen. Yeah, I, I told people that, uh, and that's a concern they have, yeah. but, but I told them, look, they're two separate issues. Yes. Uh, one is about congestion, about air quality, about, sure. about giving the opportunity for bikers to be safe. Sure. Let them fill their, is it used, they use the term uh, filtering in, in, in England. Right. Instead of lane splitting. Instead of lane splitting. I like that better, and because I, splitting I, sounds like you're doing something wrong. Right. I, I think we're going to change it to filtering. Sure. You know, the status right now is, uh, because of our short time schedule, mm. what uh, what I plan on doing is putting the people that are interested in mm-hmm. this process, both pro and con, mm-hmm. uh, to get together this summer as we have meetings, have some okay. working groups, come up with some solutions, again Utah solutions that make sense. But mm-hmm. uh, at the end of the day, if you look at the if you look at the international stats, mm-hmm. the people that use this are usually commuters. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not your recreation riders because recreation riders right. like me that ride maybe you know four or five times a month from sure. April through October. Right. The fair part, weather riders. The fair sure. weather riders sure. on a Saturday or Sunday, you're sure. probably not going to do it. Right. But if I'm if I'm commuting on a regular basis, yes, from Salt Lake to Ogden or vice versa. Right. And, and for me, for example, I ride. Um, you know, I, I can work. I, I only need to go to Salt Lake say once a week. Yeah. But if the weather's nice, you're going to ride your bike, and I'm going to get stuck in that traffic because yeah. that's when you go home. It's five yeah. o'clock, and it's miserable on a right. bike when you're. So you know, all it'll do is let me either take the exit out, and I'm not. You know, I don't think anybody's going to go. Yeah, I can lane filter the entire yeah. way home. No, no, it's, that's crazy. <laughs> Not it's not going to work. That's not, yeah, it's not going to yeah. happen. Right. And so um, I, I think that this is definitely something that needs to happen and will happen. It'll, and, it'll happen. And, yeah. also, and, and part of this is about the education, as you mm-hmm. mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've already had the discussions with UDOT. UDOT has okay. funds available for highway education. Oh, perfect. That was one of the cons that was brought up. So, we, you know, there's no question we will have education funds. I've talked to uh, the director of UDOT. Uh, this afternoon, mm-hmm. and uh, there'll be funds available to do TV promotions, to do, to do radio. That was the one concern with so, the person that was in the spot on KSL, right. Dan Terry. I called him, chatted with him a nope, little bit. No question, it requires education. Sure. So we know that that has to happen, so right. we, we look at the speed. That needs to. We need to look at a legitimate speed, how far over that speed they can sure. do, the cir- circumstances that they can be in. And then we look at, okay, uh, exactly what do we need to do to make both the motorcyclist and the driver's aware so sure. that there's there's no animosity you have between the two. Right, motorcycle sandwich between a car. Right. And the other thing, um, real fast about, I know you're busy, um, with with the uh, the education part and the funding, I'm glad that's covered because that was one of the cons. I'm trying to think of the other con. Probably the liability. Well, it wasn't so much like, I think it was the, the argument of, uh, you know, the other drivers or why it should be next is because you know they're not going to embrace it and i i to an extent i agree that people are kind of slow to figure out a lot right but if you never start it they're never going to figure it out yeah no. and the, the example i use is the the law where you're supposed to go around the lane when there's an officer off the side of the road you're not supposed to go in the lane next to him yeah you got to yeah. give him as much room as possible and i still see people driving right by and i'm going you still see that happen that's yeah. against the law and that's been against the law for a long, long time. time yeah but you shouldn't let 
criminals decide what laws should, because they don't care about laws anyway. That's right. You know what I mean? You shouldn't let the... It's like carrying a gun, right? Exactly. <laughs> like the constitutional carry. Yeah. Yeah, that's another bill that I'm really excited about. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you can carry all day long, open carry, and as soon as you cover it, you're committing a felony, you die for your country, yeah. but you can't cover it up. That's, it doesn't make sense. It makes no sense. Yeah, you got to clean those up, so... Yeah, I'm glad you took some time to meet with us. I think we covered good. everything. Well, I think we good. Yeah, appreciate you coming down. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much yeah. for sponsoring. Let's there. let's be in touch and make sure that anybody sure. that has an interest out there get a hold of me through the sure. summer. Okay, and uh, we'll put them in touch with a uh, working group and sounds good. Get this that thing done through the summer into next year. Get it done and get it done right. Get it done right. Yeah, let's sounds have a, let's have a good deal. All right, thanks so much. Thank you.